This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Monday, the second day of October in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here's what we're tracking tonight. In a meeting with President Irfan Ali and senior government officials, a large group of teachers today said they would prefer an increase in their allowances over an increase in their salaries. The meeting, which went on for over two hours at State House, was done in the absence of senior officials from the Ghana Teachers Union. The GTU has been pushing for an across-the-board increase in salaries as part of a multi-year agreement. The GTU has proposed a 25% salary increase for 2019 and 20% each year for the years 2020, 2021, 2022 and 2023. But during the meeting with President Irfan Ali today, a group of head teachers and deputy head teachers from across the country explained that salary increases are often met with heavy taxation, and as such, it will be more beneficial for them to receive increases in their allowances. The head teacher of St. Stanislaus College, Donald Lewis Isles, was among the first to make the case on behalf of the teachers. The teachers, we only get one salary, we get, we get a big growth. But after deduction, we are looking thin. While the policemen and the military officers, they look nice because they have all these little things like housing allowance, committed over time, meal allowance, laundry allowance, a whole lot going for them. I gotta check really good. I'm here for that. And I think <laughs> and I think we need to review that for our teachers. So see what we can do for our teachers. It was explained that currently, teachers are only afforded a uniform allowance of $8,000 per year. The head teacher from St. Stanislaus Lost College said an increase in allowances would go a far way for teachers. To be honest, Mr. President, when we get increase, I personally, I don't believe in increase in salary because Mr. Stash is always there waiting on us. <laughs> And so when we talk in this is a good man. So when we talk increase, the tax man is there. But then we can look if we're going to have increase, then we need to increase the threshold. The proposal was met with loud applause, with a number of teachers echoing similar sentiments. In addition to increases in their allowances, some teachers proposed that they be provided with cash grants and one off bonuses in December. Another teacher, Odessa Paul from Paramakotai Secondary, said in addition to the increase in the allowances, teachers should not be made to wait four years to benefit from their Whitley Council allowance. Added to that, she made a case for teachers to be given a discount or welfare cards that would allow them to benefit from reduced prices when shopping and accessing various services, including health care services. I don't really believe in increase since, you know, when the salary increase, everything else increases, so it's like we're at square one. So I'd like to know if we can be given maybe like a welfare card, so should we go to a private hospital, should we go do groceries, should we go to courts to buy something, we can at least have a 20% you know, discount, and I think that would be much more beneficial than you know, a lot of other things. So The president said he has taken note of the recommendations and proposals made by the teachers. In his opening address, he also indicated that the anomalies that existed in the medium wage applicable for different teachers will be corrected retroactively from the 1st of September 2020, with some $700 million set to be paid out this month. Head teachers and deputy head teachers also made a case for teachers across the country to be given a number of non-financial concessions, including scholarships to pursue their master's degree and land and housing units. The president, in response to his administration, is cognizant of the fact that there are a number of teachers who are still awaiting land allocation, despite their applications being in the system for years. It was against that background that he instructed officials from both the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Housing, Central Housing and Planning Authority, to prioritize the land and housing applications of teachers that have been in the system prior to 2019, but also to work with the commercial banks to fast-track loan approvals for teachers. So, what I can ask the CEO to do for me now is to check in the entire school system to see all the teachers who would have had an allocation made to them of a piece of land, but they don't have the bank loan, 
or the, the, the bank is giving them a hard time. And we get deal with that as a category. We bring those teachers together. I bring the bank in the same room with them. And we do a one exercise where we have the bank approve all the loans on one day at a special rate, and we negotiate that. Right? So let's do that as one category, where we, we take the teachers who already have an allocation. Then the second category is teachers who have an application that is before, uh, before what is the year they're looking at? Before 2019, I think. Teachers who have an application before, we have to do it in categories, right? Before 2019, and we find a solution to that, and then beyond that, right? President Ali said that now that he has made good on his commitment to consult with teachers directly on their needs, he is in a better position to put together a plan to address their concerns. The Education Minister Priya Manik Chan and the Minister for Finance, Ashley Singh, were among the government ministers present at the meeting. The Ghana Teachers Union has indicated that there should be no boycotting of the union in negotiations involving the welfare of teachers. The president said the union was invited to the meeting also. More news coming up in just a moment. Lord, I just love to shop in the store. My customers, them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Bust the flavors, that my craver, we're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors. Grab a bust the flavor, flavor, flavors. Yeah, taste busta. Grab a busta, bust the flavor, taste the savor. Busta, bust the flavor, flavors. Busta, bust the flavor, flavors. Standing by your side Golden service Half a century and more New India Assurance Our policies are secure From the heart of India We serve this island To strengthen you can trust You're safe when you come to us New India Assurance Company Assurance when you need it most for your home, motor or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brigdam next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260-4157. Comfortable parking available. Well, four Guyanese nationals and two Albanians were arrested by Spanish authorities after the Guyana registered boat they were operating was found with more than 2,000 pounds of cocaine. In a statement released by the Tax and Customs Department of Spain, the fishing vessel which carries the name Matthew was busted in the Atlantic Ocean near the African country of Cape Verde. In operation between the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency and the Spanish Navy, the six persons were arrested and a large amount of cocaine seized. The Spanish Customs Agency said the investigation is the result of the existing international channels for the fight against drug trafficking, through which information was received 
from the U.S. agency, which alerted the existence of an international criminal organization that would seek to carry out the transfer of a large amount of cocaine from one vessel to another in the sea. The authorities said the fishing vessel is registered to the port of Georgetown in Guyana, but was sailing without the Guyana flag. The search of the vessel uncovered the large parcels of cocaine and the entire crew was arrested. The Spanish Navy also found the equipment that was being used to transfer the cocaine from one vessel to another. News source understands that the Customs Act Narcotics Unit in Guyana has been made aware of the drug bust and is conducting its own investigations. Guyana has been leading the ambitious CARICOM program to reduce the region's food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. That's according to the country's Minister of Agriculture, Zulfikar Mustafa. In a statement, he said significant progress has already been made in reaching the regional goal. CARICOM's annual food import bill stands at around 5 billion US dollars. In his statement to mark the start of Agriculture Month this month, the Agriculture Minister said that while CARICOM member states have so far achieved overall 57% of the target towards Vision 25 by 2025, there is still lots more to be done in order to achieve the vision in the next two years. He said with Ghana being a key contributor to achieve Vision 25 by 2025 and poised to be the food hub of CARICOM, the country is cognizant of the development that is needed in the agriculture sector. With Guyana being a key contributor to achieve Vision 25 by 2025 and poised to be the food hub of CARICOM, of the CARICOM region, we are cognizant of the development that is needed in our agriculture sector. As such, approximately 4% of our budget of being invest of we are making into the agriculture are allocated to the agriculture sector in 2023. The Agriculture Minister also explained that significant investment is needed to increase production and to transform agro-food systems in order to achieve food security. In the case of Guyana, he said the government is looking to form new partnerships with regional and international financial institutions and investors to address the concern of food security and the threat of climate change. So the government will continue to invest in opening up new agriculture land as the Director General would have said. We are looking to open up new lands in the MMA scheme, new lands in the Intimidate Savannah. We are going into new crops. I just talked about corn and soya. We are talking about the high value crops. We have started the trial of wheat very shortly. The biofortify rice will become a variety for farmers to plant where we are growing the supplement in the rice. So these are monumental achievement for us in the agriculture sector. Additionally, he said the government is also seeking to expand cultivation and production to reduce imports and increase exports to foster diversification while seeking to implement several innovative measures to drive sustainable production. Audits are a routine practice for any business, more so in the international petroleum industry. These audits ensure that the expenses incurred by ExxonMobil are aligned with cost to recoverable expenditures. Guyana has been working to ensure that audits are done in a transparent manner, utilizing international and local expertise. Come visit us on Waterloo Street. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's still on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you.
With the Ghana Power and Light Company facing an increase in demand for electricity, the government wants companies that utilize a high volume of electricity to go back to self-generation. Last week, GPL announced that it has noticed a great demand for power, with the current peak demand surpassing the usual numbers. Over the weekend, President Air Finale, in a statement from State House, said while efforts are on the way to increase power generation, he believes companies that were not previously on the national grid have returned to the grid, and that is putting a strain on the power company's capacity. We want to encourage the high volume consumers to go back on self-generation between 1 to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. so that we will not have the outages to residential uh, uh, communities and residents across the country. When we look at it, maybe uh, if we have maybe around 15, 15 to 20 of the large consumers self-generating during this period, that would give us back that room uh, that will avoid the outages that we have now. While he did not name any of the high-volume consumers, the president said he believes many of them have turned to the national grid to take advantage of the subsidized power available from GPL. He said if those high-volume consumers remain on the GPL grid, they will face an additional cost of 10 cents per kilowatt hour during the peak demand hours, adding that the measure will only be temporary. As a temporary measure, we'll have an additional cost of 10 cents per kilowatt an additional cost of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So they can go back without absorbing this additional cost by self-generating because they've built up the capacity for that between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is a temporary measure until we get this close to 30 megawatts of new power coming in at mid-December and that will take care and then this temporary measure will be uh, withdrawn. GPL customers have been faced with increased power outages over the last few weeks, forcing the power company to last week issue a plea for customers to conserve on power and ensure they unplug electrical items when not in use. The power company has benefited from increased budget allocations over the years. The leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, today stepped up the opposition's call for there to be a national plan of action to root out ethnic discrimination and simultaneously promote inclusion and equality among the people of Guyana. In a statement, the office of the leader of the opposition vowed to continue the fight for racial unity, dignity and equality. Predicting a return to power in 2025, the opposition said, under a new coalition government, a multi-stakeholder national action on race relations, equality of opportunity, inclusion and anti-discrimination will be crafted. He said the opposition sees such a plan not only as a moral imperative, but also as a key driver of economic growth and social progress. The Office of the Opposition Leader said it is time to shift from rhetoric and talk to the formulation and implementation of concrete plans and measures. According to Mr. Norton, the proposed plan will address the need to boost the capability and impact of the Ethnic Relations Commission, the Public Procurement Commission, the Women and Gender Equality Commission, the Human Rights Commission and the Indigenous Rights Commission, through increased funding, prompt appointments and reappointments of commissioners, and the facilitating of international technical support. The agencies, he said, must become true change agents. The opposition plan also intends to see ethnic impact assessments being done and for a revamping of the Fiscal Transfer Act to provide for the formulation and implementation of objective criteria for the purpose of the allocation of resources to local democratic organs, thereby reducing discrimination against communities regardless of their voting patterns or social profiles. Focus, the opposition said, will also be placed on social services, the issuance of contracts, transparency and accountability, and the introduction of multi-ethnic studies in lower schools. The opposition noted that as it stands, the ruling Pacific administration continues, in its opinion, to foster racial and political conflict and the discrimination, victimization, and exclusion of citizens, communities, ethnic groups, civic society organizations, and other political parties.
Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guy Oil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, another important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. Uh, sorry! Jack? Hey! Boys, where are you going with all that speed? Yeah, today is the 15th. My NAS contributions are due and I ain't even get the farms as yet. Hold on. You mean to tell me that you're not aware that all self-employed persons can now make their NIS contributions using the MMG app from the comforts of their homes and offices? Really? You know, I just pay my bills using MMG, you know? Yes, Jack. And the thing's simple. All you have to do is open the app, select pay bills, government services, NIS, and pay. They will prompt you to enter your NIS number, the month you're paying for, and the amount. So, I don't need to submit any form? The only time you submit in a farm is when you're making a claim. Wait, wait, I could make a claim too? Oh no, Manja, you didn't know that? <laughs> yes, all self-employed persons are entitled to all benefits from NIS. Well, except for the industrial benefits. And here's the good part. All of their farms, you can download them from the NIS website. Well, girl, I'm really glad I bumped into you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Make sure you pay your bills later. Later? I gotta sit down right here and pay my contributions right. first. Take care. For further information, please visit the website at www.nis.org.gy, the National Insurance Scheme Facebook page, or your nearest NIS office. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken, and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Bust the Soda Water today. Bust the Soda Water. Now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Svetlana Marshall in the region. A church roof collapsed during Sunday Mass in a northern Mexican city, killing at least nine people and injuring 40, authorities said, as rescuers worked into the night desperately looking for another 30 people, believed to be trapped under the rubble, Reuters said in a report. Working on their floodlights, military personnel supported emergency services using rescue dogs and earth-moving equipment to identify and dig out survivors from the ruins of the church in Sudat Madaro, a city on the Gulf Coast. Footage and social media showed the moment the church roof caved in. Nine people died and another 40 were taken to nearby hospitals, while 30 other worshippers remained unaccounted for, Reuters said. Police on the island of Grand Bahama 
are investigating a boating accident which has left several people injured. The Royal Bahamas Police Force states that 14 people, 11 adults and 3 toddlers were injured. Reports indicate that shortly before 1 p.m. on Sunday, a vessel with 21 people on board left Fortune Bay Drive en route to Grand Quay, Abaco, when the vessel collided with a sandbar, a half mile north of the Freeport Dock. Several passengers were reportedly ejected from the vessel and subsequently retrieved from the water. The passengers, all of Bahamian nationality, were assisted by another vessel and returned to Grand Bahama. The injured were taken to hospital for treatment. And finally tonight, international news. Reuters in a report said a defiant Donald Trump attacked New York's Attorney General and the judge overseeing his civil fraud trial as it began on Monday, with a state lawyer accusing the former president of generating more than $100 million by lying about his real estate empire. Attorney General Letitia James is seeking at least $250 million in fines, a permanent ban against Trump and his sons Donald Jr. and Eric from running businesses in New York, and a five-year commercial real estate ban against Trump and the Trump Organization. Testimony in the Manhattan courtroom began following opening statements, with Donald Bender, a longtime accountant for Trump's businesses, as the state's first witness. Trump told reporters before the trial began that the case was a scam, a sham, and a political vendetta by James, and during a lunchtime break called the Democrat a corrupt person, a terrible person, driving people out of New York. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>